I think this is a super underrated piece of gear and Hotone, that's what I call you, have got some things incredibly right, in particular in the software editor, which I think a bunch of other companies should pay attention to because this makes for a really, really good user experience, I think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Okay, so credit where it's due, I think the Hotone Ampero Stomp 2 is a little bit of a dark horse in the modeling world um, and I think it's one of those things that maybe they haven't spent loads of money getting it in front of influencers and the sorts of people that you might have heard about in order to you know get this in front of more people but I wanted to show you some of the things that I think are really cool about this as a unit so first of all uh, I guess worth saying I think it sounds really good <laughs> which is obviously the most important thing. The one area that I would say that I feel like it's lacking in is kind of the foot switchable settings. Um, there are things you can do though. Uh, so it's not a total disaster, it's just not as flexible as some of the Boss, Fractal or whatever else units. So let's just get in here and I'll show you what I mean. So. Uh, I'm going to set it up in serial. Um, now, let's just take a look at the, the breadth of effects that are in here. So you've got like a a few compressors. What's really nice is you look here, it tells you exactly what these things are based on. Now, I don't know whether they're legally not every company, as far as I'm aware, would be able to get away with doing this, but Hotone are clearly doing it and they put in a disclaimer and stuff. But um, I think this is really useful in terms of knowing what the things are based on. So you've got like a Ross compressor, a Keeley compressor, a Boss compressor, I think. Um, and, you know, it tells you when these things are based on specific real world material. Now, in the Helix world, it would probably take a little bit of Googling to be sure of what's in the pedals. Um, or in the models. Equally in the fractal world, you know, you can probably make it out most of the time what the things are based on, but sometimes it takes a little bit of um, googling. So that's a nice feature. So, you know, if I'm looking for an exotic EP booster, uh, I can be sure now that when I go on here and I choose the enhancer, that that's what it's based on. Um, so the, the PC software is really good for that, or the stomp editor, whatever this is called. Um, then we've got some interesting effects here um, in particular I thought that these were quite interesting uh, so we've got things like where is it digital pitch I think I'm looking for quad pitch oh, good <laughs> You know, a, a range of pitch effects. Some of those, I think, sound better than others. But you've got enough stuff in there that you can get a little bit busy with it. Uh, a bunch of wild pedals. Now, here's an area which I really like. Again, same as what we've got before. We've got green drive. And we've got a mixture of not just the iconography, but we've also got them telling us here what these things are based on. So it's just a super interesting way of doing stuff. Blues driver here, the Keeley modded one. I guess that's going to be a full tone OCD, yeah. 
tube driver, really nice graphic for that as well. Uh, a blues breaker, uh, drive master, Zen drive, barber direct drive, overdrive pedal. So these are interesting pedals as well that I don't think you get in a lot of other modelers. The Klon here, which I missed earlier, Love Pedal Eternity, uh, Horizon Devices, and then a Timmy. So some really nice stuff there. Then what I think the, the real highlight for me, similar to all of this stuff that I'm saying before, but you've got such a, a great choice of amps. So we've got a Tweed Champ, Tweed Deluxe, Tweed Princeton, a Baseman, then a 65 Twin, a 65 Deluxe, uh, the vibrato channel of the 65 Deluxe, 65 Princeton, and they've even given you the circuit version, um, a super reverb, and a vibe reverb. So I'm going to try this one for this video, but um, you know, then the Vibra King, the Vibra Lux, the Concert, which I'm not sure if any other modeler might not have that in it, the brand Super, brand face Super Amp, uh, just a really interesting bunch of stuff, Silver Face Twin, Bandmaster, Silver Face, uh, then Supro, Vox 15, Top Boost, AC15, the Normal Channel of AC30, Highway 103 Norm, which we see in Helix and Fractal, I think, a Gibson Scout, Jazz Clean, Emperor Clean, so Matchless Chieftain, Matchless DC30, that's a great one, uh, an Orange AD30, Mezabugi Lone Star, so that's cool, I might check that one out later as well, the Bogna Shiva, a Dr. Z38, a Dr. Z Route 66, so that's in quite a lot of modelers, Pendragon I've not heard of, uh, a Trainwreck Express, so that's a really cool one. A train wreck Liverpool, also really cool. Uh, a bad cat, hot cat 30, so that's like an AC30 type thing. Uh, Silhouette 100, a Dumble. Then we go on to the driven amps. Um, so we've got the bright channel of a baseman, the switch on on the drive channel of a brown fiber king, the AC30 top boost channel, the some other channels, and then we get some Marshall stuff. So a small 18 watt blues breaker mini, uh, JTM45, JTM45, uh, the other channel, and then the jumps versions, JMP50, uh, Super Lead, and JCM800. Uh, I think those are just based on, you know, your classic circuits. So, sort of, if you think of a JCM800, it's not like a weird version of it, it's just what that amp is. Um, a Mezabugi 2C Plus lead channel, pretty cool. Another channel of this Shiva, AC30 drive, a Friedman BEOD, which is awesome. Uh, Bogner Ecstasy, also awesome. Soloist, so the slow 100. Um, Matchless Chieftain, another channel of it. Dr. Z38 drive channel. The lead channel of the Mezabugi, though they've not done the, f the switch on it for uh, the gain setting. Hot Kitty Drive, so the top boost channel. Drive channel of an ODS. Marshall JCM900. Rock of Herb. Meza Mark IV lead channel. Soloist 100 lead. 5150. Friedman HBE. Angle Savage. Angle lead. Diesel. Uh, a rectifier, vintage modern voicings. Still more VH, another Bogner, and then some bass amps. So we've got, I think, six or seven bass amps. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. So those are the things that I really like about it, is that they've gone to the trouble of actually telling you what these things are based on, so that you could go and you could look up, you know, what do people use a vibe reverb for? Uh, you know, you've got bright switches on there. Um, this volume here, I guess it's going to be like your gain. I think there's a setting where you can tell it to automatically match your cabs, but for me personally, I like to go in and choose my ones. So again, I think I'd go for something like this. You can see there, even in the cabs, the speaker changes with each choice that you're making. 
So that's kind of cool. <laughs> So you know, here I'm using a, and it gives you the the uh, mic mixes as well. So here I would look for something like an SM57 and an R21 combo, and so then mix two is that. So that's really useful, and you can choose where on the speaker you're going to be putting that. You can see that little visual there. So that's nice. So really easy to work with guitar tone wise I think um, then I'm gonna add just show you some of the delay choices we've got analog delay stereo as well um, BBD chip based delays uh, a boss digital delay type type thing space echo dual delay ping pong sweep delay tremolo delay lo-fi delay ring delay reverse delay vintage rack Ambience, uh, Ambience 2, Infinite Delay, be nice to have some diffusion on those I'd suggest, um, like a DM2, uh, like a Memory Man, keeps disconnecting uh, echo press maxon a few maxons and then 2290 mod So some really nice options and equally then in reverb we've got some really cool stuff. Um, the spring reverbs tend to take up quite a lot but we've got clouds, shimmers, tube springs, combo springs, large plate, I used that one earlier, arena, concert club, studio, but uh, just a good selection, it's nothing you know mind blowing there. I have to say I think some of what's going on here does kind of remind me of the fractal stuff where it's like when you pull up stuff to me it does sound immediately quite gratifying. I just think they've done a really good job with this, you know, aside from it dropping out. I think that is because I'm using this at the same time as my uh, DAW. And it may even be that this lead is potentially not ideal. I'm not exactly sure on that, but it's not happened to me before, I promise. My thoughts on it, you know, this is the first time that the hardware or software has been dropping out in this way. But... A great choice of amps, or selection of amps, a great selection of drives, some really usable delays and reverbs. I really like the cab section in particular, I think they've done a great job on that. Um, it's a, a pretty serious little modeler. The only downside for me with this, as far as I can tell, is more to do with this foot switching stuff. Whether you could find a way to make that work for you with the relatively, compared to some other competitors, limited foot switching. but I think this might be, I think, my favourite of all of the kind of software editors that I've seen. This is just exactly what you'd want, in my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Are you impressed by this, or does this not impress you much, Shania? I'll catch you in another video soon, and uh, let me know if you've got kind of thoughts on the Ampera Stomp. 
Whether you'd like to see other manufacturers doing this sort of thing, to me this is quite inviting. I don't know about you. Cheers! Oh, you'll be able to get this preset along my, with my others in the uh, description if you want. Cheers for now.